Chicago Bulls. What if I told you that there was a man who'd won six NBA championships, an MVP, two all-star MVPs, eight assist titles in a row, and was a 10-time first NBA all-team player? You would think that he may have some sort of consideration to be in the GOAT status. However, this guy is never talked about in respect to that. He's often considered one of the top 75 players of all time or top 50 players of all time. But he's often excused for one reason or another not to be considered one of the greatest players of all time. This player is Bob Cousy of the Boston Celtics of the 50s and early 60s. It's something that I just purely don't understand why he's so wildly disrespected and I want to talk about it in this video. For everyone, Michael Jordan fans are the best, and if you like what I have to say, please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to see more. So to say that somebody, as a leader of the team, the sec considered the second superstar of the NBA, after George Mike and another wildly disrespected NBA all-time great, how is somebody like that not considered to be one of the greatest players of all time, or at least in the top 10? It's largely due to excuses. How are you going to excuse somebody who was the leader of a team who was, as I had said in the intro, had won 10 NBA, all NBA first teams, just to simply describe how great he was, and winning alongside with Bill Russell when at the time when he was on the team was considered the star of the team. Some people may have said that, a lot of people have said, and especially in hindsight, said that Bill Russell was better, and I don't disagree. But to say that Kuzi was not an integral part of that team is just wildly, uh, a, just a, a bold face, either oversight or lie. He won six NBA titles. He only lost one uh, for a championship round that he went to. He was six and one. That's better than LeBron James. It's better than pretty much everyone in NBA history as a leader of a team outside of John Havlicek and Bill Russell himself. If you even consider John Havlicek. And otherwise, he's tied with Michael Jordan and he's tied with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You got to consider these things of some of the biases that you have to consider these all-time greats. Just look at the numbers. They're right there in respect to that. Somebody who won eight assist titles in a row and has, in, to my understanding, the second highest assist for a single game of all time in 29. When the assist rules didn't allow dribbling after the ball was catched in motion to, to make a basket. How can you consider that not great? Another guy to bring up again, LeBron James. He has two statistical titles throughout his entire career. He's got a scoring title and assist title. Bob Cousy had eight assist titles in a row. It's something that is the only person who's ever had more assist titles in a row. And I believe for all statistics in a row is John Stockton with nine assists. Otherwise... To my understanding, nobody has won that many statistical titles in a row. It's not even close. Another consideration to take into account for one of, the, if not arguably, the greatest passer of all time. Somebody was in top 10 scoring every time if you want to say that he couldn't score. Or if you want to look at the raw numbers, as I explained, the rules are different. He also was a pioneer of the flashy pass. He's credited by pretty much anyone that cares about it uh, as the first flashy passer in NBA history, and especially one to have it transcend time to influence guys such as Magic Johnson, Jason Williams, amongst other all-time flashy passing greats. Ten-time first All-NBA. I'm not a big awards guy because you can just pick them. But if you want to talk about guys like LeBron James, I believe he only has 13. He had won 12 All-NBA in his 14-year career, one of those seasons being a very small comeback to count as one of them. 
He had won an MVP. He had won two All-Star Game MVPs as well, if you like to consider those things. And he did this in a league going up against guys when the MVP award came out. Bob Pettit, Bill Russell, and Wilt Chamberlain. He'd won one of them. And they were voted on by the players. And within the MVP votes, he was also top five for a majority of his career in MVP votes. It's not like he was voted on once and then everyone said he sucks. No, he was always in consideration of being one of the best players in the league at the time. And I, how I define greatness is dominance that transcends time. Dominance, titles, things that you earned cannot be taken away from you. To go back to the assist titles, the championships. These are things that cannot be taken away from you. I know there's been a six-game sample size lately uh, that they've been trying to diminish another player with, or whatever the case be. I mean, it's. I think that's just a sidebar that I won't get into, but I think it's it's laughable. Why don't you... You have to do that for every game of all time to have any credit to that. If you want to go and you want to audit every statistician, and if you want to go and audit the computers that take track of these things, I think the person, there needs to be a person, an authority, one person, or a group of people that are considered authorities to go and audit it if you're going to count things like that. And you have to do it throughout all NBA history for it to be fair. But I digress. Bob Cousy also was the first president of the Players Union. He was the first star to be signed to a shoe deal in the NBA with Converse, which transcended many generations and is still a major shoe company in the world today. If you don't put the name Bob Cousy, you don't go and you sit there and disrespect and laugh the era by laughing at some of the rules that they had to account by, by having to dribble directly on top of the basketball. And a lot of people laugh at the black and white footage of him dribbling one hand. For the people that didn't know, he was ambidextrous. He broke his wrist as a child, had to learn how to use his other hand, and he was able to dribble with both hands, and he was able to do hook shots with both hands. Something that most players in the NBA can't even do a hook shot by itself, let alone being ambidextrous from it from the free throw line, as there's many highlights showing him doing that. Taken into consideration, you may have bias. You may go and you may mock the amount of teams that were in the league. You may play time machine basketball and say this guy would have done better at this time. Matter of fact is, is that you can't do that. Put some respect on the people's names that came before the modern NBA players. Bob Cousy should be considered a top 10 NBA all-time great. And he's greater than LeBron James. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. And if you disagree, if you think that all the things that I talked about should not be in consideration for Bob Cousy to be a top 10 great of all time, let me know why. Please, with some sort of argument. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. And Michael Jordan fans are the best.